Our guest today is a multi-award winning cinematographer and director, Paul Cerisi. Paul has over three decades of experience behind him, and when we say multi-award winning, I assure you that is no overstatement. If you go to Paul's Wikipedia, there is not a year that passes where he isn't bringing home a handful of awards for his work behind the camera. And his future appears to be just as focused. This interview nearly didn't make this episode because Paul is actually in production as we speak, but thankfully... He has very graciously given us his lunch break to take some time to talk with us about his very impressive career. Um, you've seen many great films through Paul's eyes throughout your life, we assure you. He's worked on movies like Picture Perfect, The Sweet Hereafter, Rocky Marciano, Duets, The Wicker Man, Where the Truth Lies, Charlie Bartlett, Devil's Knot, The Captive, Guest of Honor, and of course, Paid in Full. With so much insight to offer and so little time to get into everything, let's dive right in. We read that it was a film called The Conformist, which I think came out when you were about eight or nine, that, that really made the impression on you that led you becoming a cinematographer. I'm curious, what, what was it about that film specifically that stood out to you in, in a way that others hadn't before? Uh, well, it, it was, I was quite young, and, and, and I think a lot of cinematographers of my generation share the same uh, impact that that film had. And, and it was literally w one night my mom took me to the movies, and of course she wanted to see uh, difficult European-style films rather than uh, your regular Hollywood movie. And it had this huge impact on me because it was the film in my memory where for the first time in my life, watching the beautiful, amazing images of Vittorio Storaro, who was the cinematographer, who I wasn't aware of at that time. Um, and I, I, for the first time, realized that somebody actually made those images. Uh, I, and b before I had been an innocent moviegoer and, and, you know, a movie just happens and you think it's, it's really something that's occurring in real time in front of you. But in fact, for the first time, I realized that this was the work of, of someone, someone who had incredible talent and sensitivity and made choices. And I guess it was the birth for me of, of the idea that maybe I could do that or be part of that or somehow be, uh, uh, that's a career that I, I, would, I would love to, to do because I, I didn't know it, I didn't knew, know it had existed prior to that, that film. And you obviously have a gift for, for what it is that you do. Could you explain to us and our viewers out there, what has it been like throughout the years cultivating and working on your craft and, and, and maturing it each year and redefining what you do? What has that been like? Well, I, I guess uh, those are those kind of things you, you, you don't really uh, dwell on or think about. But you, you just sort of go out and do it. Um, uh, but I guess in retrospect and, and over time, people ask you such uh, questions. But, I, but I, I think the thing is that uh, you, you have to love watching movies to, to be working in film, uh, in the movies. And, and I think uh, that was always the, the first and foremost thing that you, you saw something and you went, how did they do that? And then in your enthusiasm to, to figure that out or find that out, you wanted to be able to uh, accumulate uh, a, a kind of arsenal of of knowledge that you would then use, and and you sort of by trial and error, you you just uh, uh, went forward, and then eventually, hopefully, you kind of find your own voice. But but in, in I guess it's like in the Renaissance painting, the Atelier, you know, where the the, the maestro is is uh, uh, painting and painting, and then all his assistants are, are are imitating and and trying to understand what what the the maestro is doing, and then. One day, twenty years later, you've sort of got a bit of a handle on it. So it's a bit like that, I guess. I'll say this: they didn't have YouTube to lean on back then, just to watch a video like they do <laughs> nowadays. You actually had to put in the work as you did, and you put in those work over the years. So we want to thank you for that. And going back to the beginning of your education, you went to film school at York University in Toronto. What would you say uh, is like the single most impactful contribution that you still? take with you today when you're working from your early education? Well, I, I think uh, one of the great things that film school uh, allows is for you, for with no worries, to just make films, to, to, to shoot films, to to edit films, to direct films, you know, to, uh, film is generally a very expensive uh, thing uh, to, to just up and do. And, 
And if, if you're lucky enough to, to be in film school, it's a place where there's, there's no danger, there's no repercussions, you can, you can make mistakes. In fact, that's the place to make mistakes because in the real world, you're not really allowed to. So uh, I guess the, 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 the blessing of, of school, of film school, uh, was to be able just to just get out there and, and do it, and then uh, hopefully learn something out of that process and and uh, hit the real world uh, with uh, uh, where, where you you have a uh, you are slightly ahead and you are able to actually sit down and shoot things. And and I, I guess I was very fortunate because when I came out of school, it was at a time in 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 the Toronto film industry where things were really getting exciting and starting up and a lot of people with little or no experience were were able to be um were, were given the chance to to shoot things or to art direct things or, or at a very early age so i benefited very much from that and and uh you, it's the old you're only as good as your last job and if, if you if you pulled it off uh you got asked to do another one so uh, that was a really great time for 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 myself Speaking of your last job and the job you've, you've done, you've done you've worked with a lot of directors, too many for us to even name. As we went through your resume, it was like, OK, he's he's done a lot of he worked with a lot of directors here. So let me ask you this. Was there one director in particular that you've ever just connected with on that level to where your vision, you guys mindset became one? And what was that like? Yeah, I, it's it's so true. I've been so fortunate to to work with wonderful, amazing people. Uh, some who uh, are just that we're at the beginning of their career. Others who are old masters and uh, uh, men and women and uh, uh, people to to really uh, appreciate and learn uh, from. But I got to say personally, uh, the the director I've worked with on on so many films. Uh, is the uh, a fellow Torontonian uh, Adam Agoyan, uh, who who has um, has been the, the it's almost been a marriage of sorts, a, cr a creative one. And uh, I imagine um, I, my favorite set to work on uh, and to uh, be um, to to enjoy cr creative freedom is is with is with him. And uh, over the years, I've learned so much from him, and also uh, enjoyed his his uh, creative generosity where he, he lets me do my thing. So it's, I, I guess he would be the filmmaker that I, I'm uh, most sympathetic with. So in, in 1994, you took home your first two awards for your work on Exotica, the best cinematography and theatrical feature from the Canadian Society of Cinematographers and best achievement in cinematography from the Academy of Canadian Cinema and Television. Can you tell us what that felt like? Well, it's it's uh, as as you can imagine, it's it's always amazing and wonderful to receive feedback and and uh, uh, recognition. Uh, fil film is a funny kind of uh, animal because uh, it's unlike the theater, for example, where you have an audience and you get a direct reaction to whatever you do. In film, you you don't, and in fact, you might never actually see the film with an audience or in public. So so it's so. Uh, 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 central and important, I guess, when 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 there is feedback of, of whatever kind, and if it, if it happens to be an award, that that's that's wonderful, uh, or or sometimes even just a great conversation where where people uh, uh, react to what you you've done or talk to you about it, and 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 you you get something out of it, you you learn. So it's 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 great to know that there are people. Um, uh, appreciating or, or taking in what you do. And just this uh, last year, you um, were nominated by the Academy of Canadian Cinema and Television uh, for your work on The Padre. And I'm, I'm curious, over the years, has your reception of being recognized through acc accolades for the work you uh, for the work you do, has that evolved from your first wins to just presently? Like, uh, I guess has the is the excitement still there to the same degree, or is it changed in a way? No, absolutely. I mean, you're you're always excited to be uh, nominated for something, or or the, you know, like I say, feedback or reaction. Uh, but I, I guess also as you get older, you are realizing that uh, a, a lot of uh, of the importance of of these reactions um, uh, by other people and by groups like academies and whatnot um, uh, are, are very um, they're, they're really for uh, 
they're so important for people starting out and who, who are young in their career. And so nowadays it, it's, a, it's a great honor to, to be recognized, but it's, it's also, there are so many more people uh, that you're competing against that, that weren't there before. You sort of took it for granted that uh, you're standing and receiving this kind of accolade. And uh, it, it's just because that's what happens. But now you, you in a weird way, uh, feel that uh, uh, you have to earn that because there's wonderful people out there doing amazing work and, and, and new work and, and uh, very exciting work. And you, you want to be relevant in some way and, and, and still part of that. So it, it is a, it, it's something that you should never become complacent about for sure. Yeah, always, <laughs> yeah, I guess it encourages innovation or uh, in, uh-huh. innovator become obsolete we're going to talk about that later I, I love how you said that i feel like i know where that came from i i will say this earlier you mentioned uh, the analogy of painting with a brush and as we all know you're being a director of photography the cinematographer that you are your painting is working with lighting lenses the whole creative process of how you see it because the director has one vision but you as a cinematographer have to paint your own story that sometimes that really draws people in so let me ask you this what is the creative process like with you film to film is it is it a, a unique process itself as molding clay or do you get into it in the moment and you just know what it is that you want to do because of the preparation well uh that is very much affected by the the director that you're working with. Some some are uh, incredibly visually sophisticated and have a very uh, clear sense of, of of what they want to do, and and they're very precise. Uh, and and others uh, have uh, almost no visual sense, and they're very much relying on you to to bring something. Um, so uh, you adjust according to the to the uh, person that you're 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 working with. So. That also affects your process and 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 how you you uh, are uh, approaching things uh, visually. Um, so it's 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 kind of rel- uh, relative to to that. It's it's ironically sometimes uh, much more exciting uh, creatively when the director is precise because then you can be very uh, refined in in your choices and decisions rather than. Uh, kind of ha- having to invent the whole thing and and uh, you know, hey, just do your thing there. Better. Just do do what you do. Do your thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So so it's uh, it, it it can be very different from film to film. But uh, the important thing is not to get frustrated by uh, uh, working always the same way in these different situations because that'll always uh, end up not working well. So yeah, you have to be flexible. And you, you credit your father for your introduction to films as well as his painting serving as a key influence in your in your taste for color and composition. Does that happen on a subconscious level or is it more intentional when you're when you're looking at something? I, I, I think the, uh, I, mean, I, I mean, in my case, um, I, I grew up in a in a very visual home. Uh, particularly, my father was a, a painter and a sculptor. He was also a cameraman. Um, so I, I was always surrounded by uh, visual opportunities and, and things to. Uh, so so I, I don't think that that you're you're almost conscious of these things. You're you're just uh, drinking it in as as you grow up. And and so uh, I definitely, again in retrospect, can see how. Uh, what an impact that that must have had on me whether i realized it or not like why why do i like uh, green over blue or you know you you don't question that it's it's a little bit like when you when you speak the vocabulary you you choose you're you're not thinking why should i choose this word over that word you just use that word and somehow that's been something that's accumulated over over years by what who surrounds you and 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 the things that interest you and and so that definitely, I, 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 my 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 father's work had had a huge uh, impact on. Me. Earlier, you mentioned um, not being complacent, but if during our research that we do is one thing that I did learn is there's one thing you can be, and that's better. And of course, you credit your wife for letting you know about that. And that's one thing that I think we've always talked about is how can we just be better and not be okay with the last project we've done, be our biggest critics and watch our work and say I could have done that better. So can you talk about how her giving you that advice got you to where you're at in life right now yeah no I, I, absolutely the, uh, I, I guess that's something uh, I, I don't know whether that's something that's of your own making or or, or, or 
is that something you you take from from the people around you and 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 I definitely uh, credit my my parents and 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 friends and and uh, uh, filmmakers that I've worked with along the way that that there, there is something that you need to uh, find yourself in a place where you can uh, it's instilled in you some uh, through these various uh, things uh, that you you want to to do more to 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 go beyond it's it's very easy I, I think for directors and cinematographers maybe actors as well that you have a bag of tricks and and they they work and so uh, the temptation is is to just rely on those rather than go beyond and and try new things out because it's there's the danger of failing and uh, you know if something's worked in the past it's going to work it's going to work again so so it's a kind of uh, thing where you have to pinch yourself uh, to 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 use your bag of tricks but also uh, keep your eye open, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure musicians are exactly. You know, why 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 is a popular musician uh, uh, current uh, now, and the one who was popular five years ago isn't? Well, they're they're open. They're they are um, uh, allowing themselves to be um, uh, open to to the world. All right, open to interpretation, reflecting the time the time that you're in. Yes, yeah. yeah. um, exactly. Um, it's, it, so in, in 2001, this kind of goes in line with trying new things. You directed your first film, Mr. In Between, which picked up quite a few awards at the international film festivals, as well as the uh, British Independent Film Awards. Um, what was that experience like in comparison to... Well, I'm, I'm curious what, uh, what, what it was directing something you always wanted to try. And can you tell us how it felt uh, to have someone else behind the camera uh, on that project? Yeah, the, uh, uh, Mr. In Between, which was the original title, uh, was a was a British film that uh, I, I had just uh, moved uh, with my family to uh, to England, and the, literally the phone rang one day, and I picked it up, and uh, it was someone saying, um, we, "We've got some money together. Would you like to uh, direct a movie in in four weeks?" And uh, stupidly, I said, "Yeah, of course," uh, which I think. Um, so many people, uh, you know, want to want to direct a movie, and and so did I. Um, it was a brilliant experience, and uh, I, 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 of course, was confronted with the immediately the, the question: uh, Do do I want to shoot it too, or do I want to work with somebody else? And and uh, uh, happily, I I, I w went with the notion of of working with somebody uh, who who literally I had just met a few weeks before. In Poland, there's a, uh, an amazing film festival called Kameramaj, which uh, is for cinematographers. And uh, he was there with his first feature. And I just, uh, uh, I, I actually didn't see his film, but uh, it, it was such a pleasure spending time with him because that, that's actually a huge uh, um, uh, factor in working on film is that you get along with the people that you you, you work with uh, because you're, you're kind of, uh, you almost spend more uh, conscious uh, uh, time of your day uh, with with these complete strangers uh, who, who you're working together to make a film than with your family. So you, you better get along with them. So I, I was blessed to work with uh, Harris Sambarlukos, who I, I met, and he, he shot the film. And it was it was absolutely fantastic. So you mentioned earlier working with that director who you guys have working with several times and that comfortability of being able to just do your thing. So let me ask you this. It would you not prefer, but what is the feeling when you actually direct? Is it, it if you, when you are directing, is that something that you take? I know you take ownership in it, but it's not being the cinematographer. It's like, hey, when you're directing, do you have to be the cinematographer or do you prefer to do standalone job of just being that director? What's for you? And, and I have just a quick segue on that. When you as what kind of director? director were you like were you somebody that 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 communicated the visual to the dp or did you leave that up to the dp and kind of take a break from that for a project yeah no it's 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 funny how quickly when you switch uh jobs uh how you become the director that you uh uh you you wouldn't imagine you, you would think that uh you would be more sympathetic to the the needs of the cinematographer, but it, but in fact, you you you're very quickly 
that's his problem and uh, mm -hmm. and he can start those but but i i don't think i was evil and uh, uh, <laughs> uh, like a dictator or anything like that and i i so resisted getting involved uh, like overly connected to the camera because i i, I putting myself in his shoes uh, you know, again, you want to be sort of left alone to do your thing uh, and, and not be interfered and, and with and, and, you know, que questioned or, you know, you, 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 you got to leave a little bit of room for, for, for the cinematographer to do their thing. Um, so I, I, I tried very much to be uh, that kind of a, a director, but it, it was, it was really great to, to allow to give up stuff and uh, because you have to concentrate on other things. Um, it, it doesn't mean that you're not uh, being visual as a director, uh, but uh, but there are certain things where you just need to back off and, and uh, uh, let them do their thing. But you'd still want to see the dailies at the end of the day, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, moving on to paid in full that that was not released until the following year in 2002 but uh, from what i read you actually shot it in 2000 in new york ontario and toronto right around that time um what was it like working with charles stone the third the director there well it's interesting speaking of first time director uh, th this was a case where the the roles were, were reversed and this was his first long film um, so, uh, I mean, he was great to work with, uh, uh, and I had to be uh, flexible uh, to, to, to take into account uh, that this is a, a new environment for him. And a lot of things were uh, 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 aspects of filmmaking that he'd never encountered before. And just, you know, just the, the, the number of people uh, mm -hmm. involved in doing every little thing. And, and, and I'm sure for him that was quite an adjustment to 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 wrap his head around and um, but all that being said uh, he, he very uh, soon uh, be, became the captain of the ship and and uh, and, and it was great and, and so it, it was it was a, a role where I had to on the one hand support and and you know be there for him and yet be careful not to overstep because uh, he's he's uh, he was learning uh, the ropes and and he's so gifted. Uh, it it's not uh, it, it wasn't a difficult uh, job for him. You would th you would think that most great directors they want to have a, a circle of people around them that are like you say someone like yourself to not to still garner the knowledge but say hey this is still your show to run. And again, I know you guys were shooting in New York. One of the things I talked to him about visually, like we we. But we both said it so much like we felt like we were there and one of the scenes that i brought out to him well i don't know if it was you or whoever thought about it. there's two scenes and i know this was years ago but it stands out to me there's a scene where makai pfeiffer's character mitch and james james wood's character's ace they're at two different times in this in the film they're looking out away but what they're looking at whether it's in their room or their home it appears to just be a normal door but to me it felt like a jail cell like they knew that there was no way to get out and things these natures to pull away shot and i'm just like man whoever sat there and thought about it whether it's you and the director however y'all got the shot it takes a group of people to visually do, get something like that done and so i want to tell you guys kudos on the aesthetic so what was it like shooting in new york and to be able to get all these great shots and of course he means he means wood harris not james Woods. I, was, I, say, I say i'm sorry oh my i never mess up this is my first time woods harris forgive me <laughs> yeah no it's uh, i mean it's it's a, a funny situation uh, that it happens uh, occurs a lot in toronto where toronto doubles for new york or chicago or it, it, it's it's just the nature of so many american films that that uh, shoot in toronto because toronto is fairly similar to a lot of american films uh, uh cities uh so it it uh, and and the, the you know the the accent of local actors, whatnot. It, so it's it's a very frequent thing, but but it was a big challenge, uh, particularly for uh, uh, the uh, Meher Ahmed, the uh, uh, production designer. That th there's there's almost nowhere in Toronto that is like Harlem. So ov obviously it was super uh, uh, key to be able to actually go to the real place, uh, see the real buildings, the real people. It it uh, it it. It, it lended an authenticity that uh, would have been impossible if, if the entire film was was shot in, in Toronto. So well, Toronto, of course, uh, 
to a large extent, the things that we're shooting there are the interiors. And so the, the important thing is, is how to translate, how to, how to bring Harlem to Toronto, you know, how to make, like you say, that, that door or that uh, hallway. Or, uh, so, so that was where there was a lot of discussion and, and planning and visual references that were um, uh, used to, to, to help everybody uh, reproduce uh, that world. And, and one thing that was specifically and very visually uh, integral to the whole thing was uh, uh, we were uh, talking a lot about uh, being in these uh, apartments where the where the uh, windows are the blinds are drawn, and you're you're in this kind of almost womb like uh, environment, uh, and and the, the, it's very dim and whatnot, and 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 that was something. Uh, we were we were hoping to to achieve and 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 uh, replicate as as that was very much uh, something that that came from the real place e even though we were sort of reinventing it so it it's uh, it's definitely uh, uh, the, the trick of filmmaking to to try to integrate both something that's that's very real and something that's trying to be real. You guys paid off the phrase "movie magic, love movie magic." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the the way that the way the the cinematography in that movie walks the line of realism and and like abstract sometimes is is very interesting. You don't you don't see that in a lot of like many urban films don't dare to to delve into the abstract too much um, as visually. Uh, we have a um, a little bit of a rivalry going on here between who the standout actor is in the film, <laughs> between Mackay Pfeiffer as Mitch and Wood Harris as Ace. Um, I just wanted to ask you, if it were up to you, who would the award go to between those two? Well, they, they were both amazing. and uh, But I, I, I guess I, I really got along with Mackay. He, he's such a gentleman and uh uh i mean i mean th that's only and and i i'm pre I'm, I'm, I'm you don't have to apologize you don't have to apologize for the truth it's okay <laughs> he is obviously well, team mckay <laughs> well i mean they're very different people and uh uh mckay is one of those uh people who can just turn it on turn it off and uh and and he's he's a very very lovely person and uh, Wood is, a, is much more, in, you know, stays always in character and very focused. So, you know, I, obviously I'm biased by the, by the, just the personal connection, but uh, I mean, they're both amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you for you on my side. Well, just thanking him for the honesty. <laughs> so, all right. So, okay. All right. So uh, before, before we go uh, from that, are there, are there any other thoughts you want to lend to the production? Like you say, it was years ago. Clearly you've done a lot of projects, but again, one of the things I told him, cause he had never seen the film before. And I say, listen, this is, we're very transparent. Which I like, this is not a black film. It's a film about things that are happening in black America. Trust me. It's a big difference. I say, listen, when you, from the budget tape they had to how it was made to me, it's a standalone. I put it in a classic genre because it just feels good to me. So did you have any other thoughts or any takeaways from the production when you were there? Yeah, well, it's it's funny uh, with with this film, with Paid in Full, with with every film, you're you're not really uh, uh, conscious of its impact or its importance or its position in culture when when you're doing it. You're 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 basically going shot by shot, problem solving, figuring things out, uh, uh, having to be flexible because uh, everything is not what was planned or discussed. And and you you just feel happy to have uh, uh, relatively successfully uh, managed to survive from beginning to end, and and hopefully uh, that you're a little bit proud of of the work that's been done. And and I would say that that film, like any other film, uh, had that, and and uh, it was very enjoyable to 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 go through that process. Well, that that speaks to you, like your ability through the years to work with so many different directors that have different preferences and different ways of going about things in so many different environments, un just under so many different conditions, uh, whether some things are planned and strategic and right to the T or some things are kind of free form. Um, your flexibility throughout all that and still producing you know, great visuals under under all those conditions is um, amazing. Congratulations. Definitely. I mean, I it, it, 
No, and even with over 80 credits, and we're going to let you go, but real quick, even with over 80 credits, if you, with all the impressive film work you've done, and like I said, you seem, you're still a humble guy, and we've never met, but me talking to you today, I can definitely see you're humble about the work that you do. Is there any advice you would give someone, a young cinematographer, someone trying to get into do what you do about the challenges that they're going to have and what they're going to have to do and to who, what they, who they need to be inside in order to make it in, in this business that you've made it in? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I think there's, there's no uh, substitute to doing. Uh, there's a lot, uh, you, you can spend a lot of time talking about stuff, but you, you really just have to hunker down and, and do it. And, uh, uh, and, and that's often difficult. That's easier said than done because who, who's going to give you that chance? But, but nowadays with, with uh, iPhones and whatnot, uh, uh, everyone can be a filmmaker and, and someone who, who really is driven to do it should just do it. They just have to want to be better. That is sound advice. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Paul, once again, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to talk with us. Uh, folks can follow your work at paulsaracy.com. I'll put the link up in the description, as well as Instagram at saracp. That'll also be in the description. Um, we definitely encourage you to check it out. Um, and Paul, can you tell us, uh, last question, what you have coming up and that, that people should look out for? Uh, well, there, uh, there's a film called Guest of Honor that, that I uh, uh, did last year, and it's, it's, I think it's out now, uh, or it may have done, I mean, now is such a weird thing in, in COVID land, uh, uh, films, uh, what a release uh, constitutes is kind of hard to describe, but, uh, but anyhow, it's, it's a, the, a film that I did recently with the director I talked about earlier, Adam Agoyan. Uh, who we've done many films over the years, and this is our latest uh, uh, film together. Okay, great. Awesome. Thank you very much. Check out Guest of Honor. I'll also find a link and put that in there as well. Again, Paul, thank you very much, you, and, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, I assume you're getting back behind the camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in a few moments. Well, thank you, thank very, you much. very much. And good. It was a pleasure. Oh, Godspeed, sir. Godspeed. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Find us in all these links that's coming up right now.